Laughter is the best medicine. How many times have you heard that old saw in your life? Well, it's true. That's why citizens in the old Soviet Union, communist China, and today's Canada are so miserable. Every day is one indignity, one more bit of oppression, one after the other, and they don't have the opportunity to laugh. I think we Americans all should take the time to have a good chuckle every now and again. And we have an unending source of merriment and mirth right here in the United States, our own clown show, if you will. Joe Biden and the Democrats, one big joke. Americans get to laugh while well, well, we still can in tonight's preamble. Let's start with Joe Biden, the man who has ushered in war in Eastern Europe because of his weak mind and even weaker character. Biden was trying his hand at stand-up comedy in 2019 when he told America this knee slapper. Because Putin knows if I am president of the United States, his days of tyranny and trying to intimidate the United States and those in Eastern Europe are over. I'm going to stand up to him. He's a bully, just like the president. And I know he doesn't want me to be president, but to tell you what, when I'm president, things are going to change. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, they changed. Pee Wee Herman wouldn't be intimidated by Joe Biden, yet Biden claimed Putin would back down in his august presence. I know, if that, if that doesn't cause projectile fluid to fly out of your nose due to laughter, I don't know what will. Indeed, the exact opposite is true about Biden intimidating Putin. The approach to Putin from President Trump was strength, markedly different from the Biden butt-kissing approach, something that Jen Psaki admitted to yesterday. So uh, there's a bit of a different tactic, a bit of a different approach, and that's probably why President Biden and not his predecessor was able to rally the world and the global community in taking steps against, uh, against Russia's aggression. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. The approaches were markedly different. The Trump approach kept an American enemy, Russia, from invading an American ally, Ukraine. The Biden approach led to a Russian invasion and the potential slaughter of thousands. Wait, that's only funny to Democrats. They roll that way. Uh, one of the laughingly weak deterrents to Vladimir Putin's invasion was the threat, not the implementation of, but the threat of sanctions. Here's Camilla Harris. The purpose of the sanctions has always been and continues to be deterrence. But let's also recognize the unique nature of the sanctions that we have outlined. These are some of the greatest sanctions, if not the, the, the strongest, that we've ever issued. <laughs> yeah. Joe Biden announced those sanctions yesterday. They had no teeth. They were easily defeated by communist China, a nation that could easily funnel money to their ally, Russia. And the kicker is that Joe Biden and his Democrats have fought like hell to keep our American money flowing into communist China through our supply chains. Then that money flows to Russia. So in case you're keeping track at home, American money negates weak American sanctions that were supposed to deter Putin's invasion of Ukraine, but didn't. Here's... President Obama's unqualified deputy national security advisor, a creative writing major. Now that's funny. Here's Ben Rhodes breaking it to MSNBS's audience that Biden's sanctions are meaningless to Putin. I think, again, the challenge here is Vladimir Putin doesn't seem to care. He knew that these sanctions were coming. I think the U.S. had communicated yeah. to Russia precisely the kind of sanctions that would be coming. So I don't think he's in any way caught off guard by this announcement. Uh, okay, wait, 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 wait. Here's a good one for you. Joe Biden did all that was humanly possible to stop Putin from invading our ally and potentially sending the globe into World War III. You see, it's funny because the premise is so absurd. Only Democrat voters believe that because they'll believe anything as, as long as there's a promise of free stuff on the end. Speaking of free stuff, here's Joe Biden at a Made in America summit yesterday. Made in America means using products, parts, and materials, as well as minerals, right here that are in the United States of America we get. It means betting on American workers. And it takes a federal government that doesn't just give up lip service to buying America, but actually takes action. <laughs> Joe Biden pimping made in America after his party does nothing but push our jobs and supply chains offshore. In fact, at that same event, 
Joe Biden featured a mining company partially owned by a communist Chinese mining conglomerate. Man, he's a comedian. This is also the same Joe Biden who used 1.2 billion of your taxpayer dollars to buy China virus test kits from the country responsible for creating the pandemic, communist China. But Biden's the authority on, you know, made in America. What? What a great joke. Jacob Snyder of the RNC put out an epic tweet yesterday after Joe Biden bombed in his latest attempt at a stand-up presidency. It read, quote, once again, Biden turns his back on the press and shuffles away in what has become the defining image of his failed presidency, end quote. You know, somebody ought to tell Joe Biden that the drop the mic moment is when you accomplish something that is good and is appreciated by the audience. Joe Biden has been a flop from day one. A new poll from the Trafalgar Group and Convention of States Action shows that 65% of Democrats in America now reject being an American. They support Canada's brutal and thuggish crackdown on free speech and peaceful assembly. The, their lecherous, well, these, their kind, these collectivist extremists, have taken over Canada, beating peaceful and innocent protesters if they dare to use their right to demand a redress of grievances from their government. Now, enemies of America are on the march and threatened to kill tens of thousands, if not millions, who counted on the United States and the West to be a deterrent to inhuman attacks on individual liberty and freedom from dictators and despots. Democrats and their leader, Joe Biden, folks, they are like a fart in church. Sure, they're initially funny, but at the end of the day, they really do stink up the joint.